Welcome to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where we feature top leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry with your host, Drew Hendricks. Now, let's get started with the show. Drew Hendricks here. I'm the host of the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where I talk with leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry, from logistics experts like Alexi Cashin, who enables wine importers to move their product efficiently around the globe, to today's guest, Michael Bergen, whose screen printing and etching business creates wine labels that go far beyond those of traditional paper. Today's episode, it's sponsored by Barrels Ahead. At Barrels Ahead, we work with you to implement a -a one-of-a-kind marketing strategy, one that highlights your authenticity, tells your story, and connects you with your ideal customers. Michael, in short, if you're a business looking to retain a winery or craft beverage producer as a client, Barrels Ahead will figure out a plan to make it happen. Go to barrelsahead.com today to learn more. Now, before I introduce today's guest, I want to give a big thank you to Diane Strand. On last week's show, Diane and I discussed the ins and outs of video production. If you're looking to incorporate video into your marketing strategy, you've got to check out last week's episode for some great tips. I am super excited to talk with today's guest, Michael Bergen, president of Bergen Screen Printing and Etching in Napa, California. And I want to thank sensory branding expert, Dr. Hobie Wedler for introducing us. I asked Kobe who would be a great guest, and without hesitation, he said, you've got to have Michael on your show. So Michael was born and raised in Napa Valley and launched his business 33 years ago. Over this time, Bergen Screen Printing and Etching has grown along with the entire wine industry. Today, they operate out of an 82,000 square foot state-of-the-art production facility. They employ over 75 wine industry professionals and produce bottles for some of the most elite wineries in the area. A Bergen bottle, it's truly a work of art. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate you having me on today. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you for being on. So, Michael, t- tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'll, I'll try to encapsulate 33 years down to about three or four minutes. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I came back to Napa in my uh, early 30s and I had an opportunity uh, to start a public relations business. And then it kind of segued into being introduced to a small artisanal studio who was etching wine bottles. And one thing led to another, and my partner at the time and I thought, well, this is kind of an exciting opportunity. We might want to uh, launch engraved wine bottles for the corporate world, or put corporate logos on wine bottles, pretty much, much like other ad specialty type of, uh, of things. So we kind of launched that back in 89, and we're focused strictly on uh, corporate America. We hired two or three artisans that have been doing the work uh, here in Napa Valley. And then in 1992, I believe it was, Robert Mondavi Winery approached us to do a very special package uh, celebrating Robert Mondavi, as I believe it was 40th harvest. Oh, yeah. So from that, we really started to pivot to look strictly at the wine industry. And uh, over the next six months, we got uh, a great project working with Seagram Wine Company, which was a great marketing company back in the 90s. And we created the three-liter distributor incentive. Mm. And so we engraved a lot of uh, Seagram labels for them. After that, uh, Sebastiani Vineyards hopped on, uh, Gallo hopped on, and so they were uh, our bottle for probably in thousands of restaurants all over the country. And many other wineries joined on as well. So we really started out as an artisan election company through the 90s. We were doing a lot of work for cruise lines. At one time, we had 25 etchers and painters just specifically for these particular markets. Um, and then one of my great clients in mid 95 asked us to get into screen printing. Mm. And, uh, and for us back then, it was a, uh, you know, nothing we really knew that much about. As a matter of fact, we were asked to screen print filled wine bottles, which you don't do. <laughs> you know, we have furnaces, but so we, we, we kind of laughed back in the day. We, uh, we would print one color with an air cured epoxy, print a bottle, put it on a shelf, look at it for three days and put it in a box. It was pretty primitive. Oh, uh, but, but from that, I, I joined a national association of uh, screen print decorators. I met a gentleman who at the time was a, uh, was a president of a decorating company outside the United States. He became a great mentor to me um, during the, uh, the last four or five years. And then in 1999 and 2000, I, I hired a young print technician um, out of the country to come down here and help me really build a screen print company. We had done some work, but 
you know, we had a small furnace that was only 40 feet long and three feet wide. And we launched a, uh, a print division. And uh, this gentleman went to Italy and bought our first Italian print machine. And uh, 20 years later, we now have eight Italian, or we have six Italian print machines, three furnaces that are 110 feet long. And Ooh. we are printing all three lines running. We're printing 100,000 bottles a day. When way back in the day, we thought we were really something because we were printing 2,000 bottles a day. Oh, so, man. That, that's been the progression, which ultimately uh, got us to move from our last building, which was 40,000 square feet. We moved in here in January of 2018 into 82,000 square feet. And we still have probably the largest etching and uh, painting or artisanal studio in California. We have uh, 17 full-time artist etchers. And so we, so we still do a very large body of work, which is all hand done, hand work. And, you know, I say that we, uh, we have the greatest forgers in America. I mean, we can reproduce Monet's, Picasso's. <laughs> there, there's not a wine label that they cannot etch and paint and really emulate anything that's been thrown at us. So, so it's, been a, it's been a great ride, a lot of fun. It's the, uh, the etching, the, the commitment to quality of etching was so ingrained in our people and in the industry. And then when we started to dabble in screen printing, we took our time to bring in the expertise and then bringing in the absolute best equipment that you could find. Um, all the screen print technology really is, is uh, comes out of Europe. They've been doing it for a long, long time. And so uh, the Italians are the finest uh, producers and makers of screen print equipment. So we get to really, you know, see the latest and greatest technology of what they have to do. And then our latest machine, actually, uh, we, we have three fully automated machines and our two biggest ones are nine colors. Oh, wow. Um, and our latest one that we got in about two years ago, um, because of, of the multiple axes that it has in the machine, the bottles turn, the screens turn, and we can also do out of round bottles. So if somebody had square bottles or kind of an oblong or rectangular bottle, we could print that as well. Oh, wow. So, so we're, we, it gives us flexibility of people, whether it's a spirits industry, if somebody wants to come up with something, you know, very, very unique and different, we can look at that. You know, our machines are capable of not only printing the bodies, but the shoulders and the necks. So we have some we have some pretty spectacular pieces of equipment uh, that we're pretty proud of. And that we can have design designers and wineries really push the envelope on what can be done. That's amazing. So, wow, that's a that's a lot um, for the general audience. What is, what is the difference? So you started as etching. What's the difference between etching and screen printing to a lot of people? Oh. It looks the same. Well, for, for etching, it's truly a hand, it's really a hand process. Every bottle, when you're etching a bottle, every bottle gets a vinyl stencil or a mask. You then have to take masking tape and you mask off the whole bottle. Because mm -hmm. it go into, and then one bottle goes into a sandblast cabinet where you are then etching out the design with a sand tool. Oh. Then it's brought back out of the cabinet to make sure it's all cleaned off. And then it goes into the paint department. And then imagine, if you will, that you've got a canvas that looks gray because that's what the color of glass looks like on a wine bottle. Once you once you've cut the aggregate aggregate surface, it looks gray mm. or like an ash. And then and then think about it. Now somebody is bringing all the color back in that was on that wine label with a paintbrush. Oh man! So we have we have some bottles that take anywhere from eight to twenty hours of labor to paint a bottle for a single bottle. Yep, for a single bottle. We have because there are people. We have wineries that literally give us famous art pieces, and they say, "Here it is. We would like you to etch and paint twenty-six liter bottles because they're all pre-sold to their wine club." Mm. And so we go to work. In screen print, you're putting bottles through the presses or the print machines, and so our big machines they can run up to 65, 70 bottles a minute. So our typical high-speed line, we run double shifts. So we're printing 20 hours a day. Our guys work 10 hour shifts. So every when our, our we have a high speed line one and two, and when they're both running, they're both producing somewhere between 40 and 50,000 bottles a day. That's amazing. So that's the difference. You have machinery on the screen print side. Etching is truly artisanal. It's literally one bottle at a time, which is why they're, they truly are one of a kind art pieces. And that's what makes them so special. And that's why they're so beloved. Yeah, so there's no no equipment out there that can do an, an etched bottle. No, it's all just hand done. Now, what do they look like? Pieces of art. You see them. Well, in you need to have. Well, it, it, you'll see people have said the term. Oh, we laser etch our bottles. Well, I 
I kind of call that nonsensical. There's little machines that can put a wine glass in there. You can stencil Bob and Sally in their wedding date, which is what I call add specialty, you know, uh, uh, stemware, which is wonderful. But when you're adding color feel into wine bottles, you have to etch a certain depth to be able to have the color feel go in. So like, so like I said, it's a one stencil per bottle. Somebody has to sandblast that bottle out and then it's all hand painted in. So, uh, so yes, it takes, um, it takes time, it takes effort. Um, I think if um, people go onto our website, they'll see it and they'll say, oh my goodness, it's really hand done. I, I, if, I, if I had a nickel for every time somebody came into our shop and they, they tour our etching facility and they say, Mike, my God, they're hand painted. I, and I say, yes, I've been trying to tell you that for the better part of six months and it's really hand done. So, um, you know, we, we, love, we love when people come in and take tours because they're absolutely kind of got smacked about what it what it's like it is it's truly it's it's magical it really is and we love doing it so that would be a great tour do you do you offer tours to the public we we, we really don't we um our tours are always open to our clients okay so any prospective client or winery customer or any a lot of our winery clients they like to try to come in while we're doing their bottles so those kind oh, of I think so stages. And now more than ever, it's funny, just because I don't know if it was the advent of Zoom and the COVID shutdown, and a lot of people, our clients are looking for content. So more and more of our wineries are asking us to kind of do videos of their bottles being etched and painted kind of along the process. So we're trying to do that to be able to give them those videos so they can put them on their websites. And because it just gives more power to their wine club members when they see these bottles that they now own, they saw how they were made. Oh, so, absolutely. We're trying, so we're trying to pivot a little bit with our social media people to try to make some of those things available for our clients. So yeah, I mean, if somebody point. if somebody called me out of the blue, you know, before COVID, I would say yes. If they were if they were referred, to, like as an example, a winery has a really good wine club member, and they said, Mike, we have somebody in from Michigan. They would love to come down and take mm -hmm. a tour. We would do that. Um, but in terms of uh, really being open to the public. Uh, we're not really set up to do that. Yeah, I, I could see that. You, the, the artists need to be left alone to create their art. Well, and, and we don't sell, you have to remember, we, we, we make nothing that hasn't already been purchased by a winery client. I mean, if we had a retail shop and we were doing other things, but we don't. Every, everything that we make is proprietary. I mean, we've had people come in and say, oh my God, you have that bottle, that bottle? Can we buy those? And I say, no, you can't. <laughs> you don't own them. It's the property of so and so winery, but I'm sure they'd be they'd be delighted to sell you one of those bottles full of wine at about one, two, three, four thousand dollars. So go, you know, get your checkbook out and go see them. It's all oh, good. absolutely! And what a great what a great idea to um, enhance a winery's story, especially in the wine club, because getting those bottles it it is so special when you see it, and then to show the behind the scenes just further helps. And that's you know, at Barrels Ahead, we help suppliers tell the story because. That final bottle of wine, there's a lot that goes into it more than just the grapes. And your well, etching truly shows Drew, that. Drew, we've seen over the last four or five years, more and more of our um, smaller producers, they are, they're ordering larger amounts of, of large format etched bottles because their wine club absolutely loves them. And they're looking for something different and they love to show them off in their wine cellars. They're very pr proud of them. I mean, they're really excited about the wine that's inside the bottle. But obviously if they can bring a bottle like out like that at a dinner party or, or an anniversary. Mm -hmm. Pretty spectacular. No, so, it's still bad opening it though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to sooner or later you want to open them because the wine, you know, <laughs> pretty darn good too. So that's okay. The bottle will last forever. The wine inside unfortunately will not. <clears throat> that's exactly right. So more accessibly though is is your screen printing. And now what what makes your screen process so unique? I know you've got the, the fancy machines from Italy and the nine colors. And well, I, I think what, what separates us, I think, from other uh, decorators is the fact that we're all about color theory now. And by that, I mean, we are, when we deal in high fire thermal plastic inks. And so these are, they come to us um, literally it's like, almost like a chunk of wax. And then we melt them. We get into a certain temperature, we melt them, they go onto the screen, and then it allows a squeegee to force this ink through the screen onto the surface of the bottle. The bottle's ink is conveyed, goes through a furnace at 1180 degrees. Oh, wow. There's, um, you know, everybody starts sometimes with a Pantone book or PMS colors, and there's over 3,000 colors in that book. 
under our thermoplastic inks, we have access to maybe 13, 1400 of those colors. Well, back in the day, you know, 15, 18 years ago, we'd say, well, we have two or three red creams and all that. Well, now we'll show people 15 or 20 reds. And then more importantly, people will say, well, we really love these blacks. And so we'll do we'll do custom mixes that are two or three different colors together to come up with a, a matte black or we have metallic inks that have kind of a frit to them. They, they kind of feel gritty. Mm -hmm. Well, we we have added some other elements that that smooths out that metallic surface and makes it look like car paint. And so so every September and October, I let the we let the lab rats from the art department and the art director take over with our print manager because our line three, which is where we do all of our small production runs of 150 cases, 250 cases, September and October, they're busy bottling or they're busy crushing and hard, you know, they're crushing their grapes. So they're not necessarily bottling. So we use those two months every year where we can to experiment with color mm. and where we, we some of the colors that are really intrigued the industry is we're really good at our blacks uh, a matte black a satin edge black um, a gloss black and we kind of add a different color to it because it's it's funny where have you noticed over the last two or three years suddenly black kind of really became vogue where if you see a lot of, especially on the higher end wines you'll see a black you'll you see a black paper background and then they'll have their branding icons on top of the black surface. And we kind of chuckle and we say, it's too bad the designer didn't think about screen printing it because when a bottle of red wine is full, there's your black background. So mm -hmm. we can each go ahead and take it a step further and we'll add these black matte satin etch finishes and then we print over the top of that. So I think what really separates us is we're not, a, we're not afraid to mix colors where other decorating companies, they'll, they'll go to the ink companies back east. They're all in Pennsylvania and Ohio. And they'll just say, well, a, cu a customer has called out a Pantone color, such and such, try to get as close as you can to it. And they'll do that and they'll, they'll send it out. Well, we're, we're not afraid to mix colors. So literally, if you go into our showroom, we have over 200 custom mixed colors and we say, pick any of these. And if you want us to tweak something between color number eight and color number 10, we'll do that. So we, we are, we're, we're real expert. I'm very confident on doing our gram mixes to come up with a, a color. And even if there's three different colors that are mixing it, we'll make sure that if we do a run of 5,000 cases, 60,000 bottles are going to look the same. Mm. And so I think that's what really, that that's what really separates us. And I think because of our, um, our expertise where I, I have guys on the production floor that have over 25 years of print experience, nothing phases them. And I've got an art department that's got years and years of experience with me that we'll, we'll test the waters on how we want to do 360 degree wraps, print up on a shoulder, do, do ungodly tight registration of color, color on color. So, you know, we're probably our worst enemy when it comes to design, but we try to push the envelope all the time because we tell our designers, design what you like, pretend the, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. And when we get your package, and we'll, we'll help them along the way. We'll tell them, okay, that you went a little too far out past Jupiter. We got to bring you back a little bit. But we want we don't want to dampen their enthusiasm. So we'll we'll act as a consulting arm to them to kind of keep them on the rails. But in the same token, we want them to feel that they can really push us when it comes to color design. Full, like I said, full wraps, top, bottom, shoulder, you name it. We'll work together in concert as a real what I want to say a trusted supplier partner. Yeah, that a client or a long or a long-standing customer, because to the end of the day, it's all about making that package step out. And this is what the vision and dream was for the winery. But we got to make sure we can execute it from a production standpoint. Sure. Uh, we like we like to be we like to be brought in on the front end, and the and the smart guys really get that because they, they realize they don't want to have a production issue on the back end. So mm. the sooner they can bring us in and we help guide them a little bit. I and mean, frankly, our guidance and consulting is free of charge. How great is that, Drew? That's I mean, pretty so, awesome. Yeah. Helping, helping people. I mean, it's so nice for a designer to be told, just find the edge, even jump off of it. We'll help put you yeah. right back on that edge versus giving them this long list of um, do's and don'ts where they're well, it, designing well, in this box. Drew, over all the years, I've seen too many designs they've come to us and I can tell production never had any input and then we have to be the bearer of bad tidings. Oh. And nobody feels good about it. So I'd rather say to the designer, when you're getting close, just you know, throw us some concepts where you're going and we'll tell you immediately, this is great. This is the challenge. Here's why. This is that this is an absolute no-no. Here's why. 
And, and also the thing with us is the great thing about screen printing, you can literally go color over color over color as, as quickly as the bottle moves to the next station. If you're, you know, if you're printing 60 bottles a minute, mm -hmm. it's moving fast through its, its, its uh, process. But whether it's metallics or regular colors, whites, reds, creams, blues, greens, you can go color over color. However, the thing in, that we use, we introduce precious metals. Whereas mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see on paper, you'll see like a foil color, a gold or a silver. We use, honest to God, milled 22 karat gold and white gold for platinum and precious gold. Oh, and wow. so it, it's, these are, these are um, inks that are milled specifically for us in Europe, in the Netherlands and in Spain. And the thing about precious metals, you cannot put it on top of another color. You have to trap around it. So these are things that are kind of tricky. Mm. So people, and it's like, we always tell them, it's got to go on last. You got a six color package. The precious metal is the <laughs> last guy going on. And so, so these are things because a lot of people love precious metals, but we tell them to also use it judiciously. They are milled 22 karat gold. So right now, if you look at where gold was last year, when before COVID, mm -hmm. our material costs went up by 65% in 12 months oh, because wow. it's commodity on the gold market. So we tell people, before you want to splatter precious metals all over a wine bottle, you want to think that that might cost you about 50 cents. So let's kind of dial that back and maybe use some metallic colors and, you know, use, use the precious metals as some accents. And so they all get that. They, we all have a pretty good laugh about it. It's going to say, yeah, we want to kind of, you know, be cognizant of what you're doing, use the precious metals to really make an impact, but then let's really make sure that we kind of, you know, don't let insanity prevail here. So, so those are part of the things that you get in screen printing that you can't necessarily get um, in paper, but but don't get me wrong, we we love. Uh, we're not about you know bashing paper labels. We some of them we love packaging that's incredible no matter mm -hmm. what what. So we see beautiful paper labels that have come to us, and we tell people you cannot convert this to screen print. This designer hit it out of the park. We will if we try to convert it, we will not do justice with it to it. But you need to stay there. Now on the rare occasions where they said, we don't care, it needs to be converted. It was usually because of a production issue. Mm. Maybe the corners got ripped up on the edge or there was a large, beautiful matte black paper, but it got ripped up in production. Whatever it is, they said, we're having too many complaints. We need to come up with something. That is when we might change or modify design. But, but we are not bashful about telling people, this is a beautiful label, leave it as is, let's do something else. Or in some cases recently, we, we have been doing combination packaging where we are putting, oh, really? we're putting a screen print design down and then a paper label is going, let's say, you know, a bottom strip or over the, you know, over the lower part, part of the bottle. A, a great example would be if people go to Michael David Winery down in Lodi, they have a beautiful package called Earthquake. Mm. So we have, the, we have the Richter scale that's going up and down like that, you know, kind of whoop, whoop, here's the earthquake and we have the gray and then beautiful uh, precious gold going right down, down through the center and then they put a paper label over the bottom of it so there's a beautiful example of mixed media of screen print and paper working together oh that's a oh man i, I gotta check that one out that, yeah, that so, sounds so, fantastic yeah so, we're, yeah so we're doing some some different things um i can also tell you we we had a great client we have a great client in bogle and we converted their package uh, called phantom to screen print um a couple of years ago and they are the first screen print package that uses an augmented reality app. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm sure people saw Treasury at 19 crimes with a paper mm -hmm. label and you can do the augmented reality. Well, Bogle did that with their Phantom package and it's pretty cool. Oh, so yeah. people should check that out. It's, it's, it's called Phantom, either their Chardonnay or the red wine blend. I and did know. I did notice that they went to screen printing. Went to screen did printing. Did not know that they had augmented reality. Go to the back of the bottle and there's your augmented reality app. Check it out. Oh, that's, sweet. that's awesome. So, so you, you did um, list you did list some of the advantages of screen printing, and there's a bunch. What in, in a concise statement, like when when would a winery go for screen printing over a traditional label? I know a traditional label could have textures and paper labels. But. Well, I, I think it's really about um, people have come to us where maybe they want to refresh their brand, mm -hmm. or they want to get away from what they had and they want to kind of update it. Um, you know, we have a lot of people thought, well, you know, we have a lot of estate or reserve packages here in Napa Valley. And that's where we do, we're doing, you know, two, 300, 500 case, thousand case runs. And so they had their top tier. Um, but then we've also seen what Bogle has done with Phantom. And we also have brand builders like Clinkerbrick, where they wanted to 
they wanted they wanted to do something other than a paper label because they wanted to grow their brand. And so by 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 changing that, they over the course of five or six years, they tripled their volume. You know, so so if people want something different. We, we were able to, in both cases, almost the design wraps all the way around the bottle. So it can be very tactile. It, it's extremely hard to take a paper label and wrap it all the way around a bottle, especially if it's gone top to bottom and you're ultimately, you're gonna have to have a break. Mm -hmm. We can go all the way around a bottle without a break. Mm -hmm. And so, so there's things that we can accomplish that you can't always necessarily get in paper. And a, and a lot of times we, we have, we have maybe 40, 50 wineries that we do, all of their bridal lines are all screen printed. But we have many of the others where we might screen print one tier and then they use paper labels for another tier. So, so most of our clients are like that. So in the Valley, probably I would say it's the higher tier that we screen print. And let's say if they got more of a kind of a, a premium or you know, kind of a premium level wine that maybe sells in that you know, $25 to $40 range that, you know, that might be paper. So it just depends on what their branding wants to do, but they want to try to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, it just means they might eliminate a big white background and we just kind of float elements on a reserve tier, but it might be only 500 cases. And that's all sold, you know, direct to consumer where some of the bigger wineries might have something where they're obviously going three, three tier and maybe they've made 50, 60, 100,000 cases and they've kept that with paper. So it just depends on, you know, where people are, people have come to us and say, you know what, this is our wine reach, the wine it sells for this. Um, we're kind of flat in sales right now. Uh, you basically have two choices. You know, Drew, you can either lower your price, which is a slippery slope, nobody likes to do that, or you can change the package. And so they come to us and say, let's change the package. And we don't wanna do another paper brand, we wanna do something different. So, I mean, you essentially have three ways to get a label onto a bottle, or actually I guess there's four. There's a paper label, there's a pressure sensitive label, there's a heat shrink sleeve, and you got a big quantity for that. And then you've got screen printing. So those are basically your four ways to get a label. Those are your four areas that you can go to if you're gonna get packaging on the glass. And so I think that we, we just like to think that now that we've done enough of this over 20 years, that we are now in the conversation. So anytime a winery says, okay, we wanna introduce a new tier or this premium tier, what do we want to do? They sit down and say, well, we can go paper or we can go screen print. And they kind of go, huh, well, let's talk about screen print. And so we can, we can talk about that. I, I can tell you over the last two or three years, what's really um, kind of come up is we're doing a lot more white wines and rosés. Mm. And the biggest thing is, is basically um, they're waterproof. I mean, they come a long way in oh. paper labels that are, you know, they kind of really resist being getting soggy or it's sitting in a bucket of water. But clearly, if you screen print a rosé package or a white wine, you know, a lot of white, light, a lot of wineries, they'll harvest the grapes, you know, in September, October, they're, they're bottling it in January, I mean, it, you know, it's staying in tank and mm -hmm. it's ready to go and they're bottling it cold. So we've had wineries that might, by the time we drain that wine out and it hits the bottle, it immediately starts to condensate. By the time it get, by the time it hits the labeler, the label can't stay on the bottle. Oh, yes. So if you screen print the label, you solve the production end of it, but also it can sit in a bucket, bucket of water for hours on end, come out and it looks gorgeous. And so, and we also like the fact that, especially with rosés, we design elements to let the, let the beauty of the color of the wine itself come through, like on a Flint bottle, mm -hmm. it looks stunning. So maybe they have an imagery on the front. We'll put um, the back label information. We'll print it on the very sides so that when you're looking at something, you don't get blowback from the backside. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the aesthetic design things that we can do. And again, if you had a paper label on front and back, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of see through it. You're gonna see that back label coming at you. Mm -hmm. so, so these are things that it makes people kind of think from a design and aesthetic standpoint, less is more. We wanna let the color of the wine show itself up. We have people, you know, basically, you know, using beautiful bottles as an example, I can show you. Um, you know, everybody loves, you know, bottles like that. You can see where oh, they're, yeah. you know, so they're, they're, they're beautiful, they're sexy, they're, you know, they got gorgeous lines to them all themselves. So we want to try to let the bottle really kind of stand out for itself along with the color of the wine. So, so we're Absolutely. seeing a lot of that. We're seeing a lot more interest in the white wine and the rosé package over the last two or three years. Oh, I can imagine. One thing I do have a, I have a question. Can, with screen printing, can you actually print, um, 
to see the backside of the, like, I've seen some different wines where if you look through the front of the bottle, you can see a design yeah, on the back of the yeah. bottle. Yeah, you'd have a knockout window. Yeah, you can look to it. Yeah. yeah so we, we basically, we're, we're printing on there, but we do it for the purpose. Yeah, you're looking right through the glass and kind of go, aha, it's almost like a portal. Yeah. The backside. I love so, that. So, yeah, we can do that as well. That's, that's amazing. So, yeah, so, there, so you can just, um, it's, you know, the world is so used to paper labels because that still probably represents, I want to say, 95 to 96% of all packaging. Really? I, yeah, ironically, Europe, you know, the Europe, this is European technology, but, you know, what do they normally um, screen print there are high end spirit packages, mm. Belvedere, Chopin, Grey Goose. I mean, we have the machine that Saver France runs Grey Goose on. I mean, mm. so those clear, so the spirit packages seem to be what it is, but um, it's funny where you've got wineries in Italy, France, and Spain that have been doing it for generations. So as you well know, if you've been there, tradition runs long and deep mm -hmm. in European wine families. So you're not about to convert any paper label to a different medium. Sure. You know, some young new winemaker, he or she is going to have to convince their parents or their grandparents, we want to come up with a new line and we might want to screen print it. But by and large, whenever I've traveled throughout this country, very rarely will I see a screen printed package but that's why it's so nice to, to be here. We call ourselves, you know, we're the new world. Yeah. So if you really think about it, we're much more open to different packaging ideas and things like that. So screen printing is really, I think that, I'd like to think that it's been a lot of work that we've done in a couple of other companies that people have now seen enough of it that they kind of go, you know what, that's an option. That's, that it's an alternative that I want to have in my design discussion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really all we're looking for is we want to say, give us a seat at the table. You might be surprised by what we can show you. Um, and, and I think it's funny, a lot of people will come into our showroom, Drew, and we have probably over 900 samples of what we've done for people. And people first come in and they're mesmerized by it. And then they realize, I haven't seen any of this stuff anywhere. And I say, it's because probably 90% of this stuff you'll never see unless you went to that winery and they sell it there or it sells to their wine club or they have some high-end wine shops or maybe a few, they'll have some pet restaurant accounts. You will not see it throughout the three-tier system mm -hmm. because they don't make a lot, you know, so much, so many of my packages, they're 200 to 1,000 cases. Well, if you only make 500 cases of Napa Cab or a Sonoma Zinfandel, you're not going to put that through any sort of a massive three-tier, you just don't have enough volume, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so once they see that, they're going to go, oh, wow this really is extraordinary because they never see it. I mean, even in wine country, I can go to some of the nicer wine shops and I'll see my stuff there because I know that they, they, they like to support the local wineries in Napa and Sonoma and Mendocino, but you kind of get out of that area and you don't really see that many screen printed packages. So again, I tell my clients, if you want to be different, just by being screen printed by the very notion that 90 plus percent of everything's a paper label, you're going to be different just by that very nature maybe it'll make somebody go to that shelf and kind of go what is this mm -hmm. and I, we kind of go once they pick it up and they kind of feel the metallics and they kind of look at a bottle going around and, and as i laugh with my clients they say god it, it's halfway to the it's halfway to the cart it's almost there you know so <laughs> anyway so we i have a lot of fun with my my clients when we talk about that but it, it's all about differentiation as well and so absolutely so i think that that in fact between the colors that we're doing and between the matte blacks and the richness of our metallics and what we're doing to soften those. We have some iridescent colors that are really kind of wild. Um, so like I said, it, it is about color theory and we have created these magical color wheels for designers that we can send them. And it's just, it's extremely helpful for them to see these wheels and they kind of go, wow, okay. I, I, I realize I got a lot of options and I, and we say, you have a lot of options. And so, we are very painstaking. We, we painstakingly make these wheels of color that are that take a lot of work, but we just realize how important they are to a designer and our winery client, especially if they're in Southern California or maybe, you know, they live in Denver. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole thing with Zooming, people are all over the, they're all over the country. I mean, we're working on a package right now. The two brand people, one's in Denver and one's in upstate, can I, you know, up in the, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of COVID, they can't, you know, they can't travel out here. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to help them see what we can do. So it's kind of like you, 
if you can't come to the mountain, then the mountain's got to try to go to you. And so, um, and we we are we are so restless and ready, Drew, for COVID to be over because oh. we we have a lot of people that want to come in and visit us, and we're ready. I mean, we're at, we're in over all of our COVID protocols, mm-hmm. and we're masked up, and we have to be. But a lot of people still have a mandate, you know. From a, from their uh, their wineries that they're just not making calls or they're not physically going places. So we get it, and, you know. And hopefully, maybe by the summer we'll start getting you know more and more visitors again because we, we kind of miss it. Yeah, we have, I can imagine. We really, I miss touring. Yeah, we have exciting show and tell, and we can't show and tell. It's a little frustrating. Yeah, so. it's a very it's a very physical object. It's so great that we ignite uh, designers' creativity with those color wheels. Well, I I think Drew that um, you know designers that. It's a lot of fun when they come in because, as a as a group, first of all, they're they're very creative, um, but they're also we're also all creatures of habit, and I think designers, if they're if they've never done a screen printed package because it's, it's spot colors, every screen is a color, and let's say if you lay a blue over a yellow, you're going to get purple. Maybe in four color process, you're not going to get that in screen print. You're just going to have a blue laying over a yellow, and so. Um, if they're not familiar with it, they're not going to feel as confident in designing with it. So mm. if we get them in here and they see what's in the showroom, it's like all the lights go on and they're so darn smart. They kind of go, oh, boy, I get it. I know what I can do and what I can't do. So we, we, we make them armed and dangerous. So we love them when they come in here because they're excited about it. Now. So, oh, now I get it because they just didn't have a lot of familiarity with it because they've been so used to designing for a paper label. Or a pressure sensitive label so it's really cool when they come in and they kind of they get it and they said okay i know what i can do i can't i know what i can't do mm-hmm. but i think i can create something magical for my client here and then we all work together collaboratively and when we do that it's kind of a beautiful thing so that's awesome yeah it's a lot of fun that's awesome where do you so screen printing where, where do you see it going over the next 10 15 years what, what do you think the next step is in the evolution um, of screen printing well I'd like to think it's going to continue to grow, Drew. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh yeah. Um, so it, it, it's um, you know we just have to continue to uh, to share the love and share the word whenever we can. I think more and more as people are continuing to look at an alternative to paper again, and I've said it before, a lot of their paper labels are great, but they want something maybe a little different, or maybe after a ten-year run, they want to change and refresh a package, and they might want to consider an alternative. Um, you know, you, you get a pressure sensitive label. What you what you really have done is you've created a, a screen print package, but with a clear substrate. Mm. You know, if you think about it, the PSL is clear and you got all your branding elements there. So really what it is, is it's a screen print. So we want those people that are creating PSLs to think that you don't need to have the plastic, the, you know, the clear, uh-huh. the clear plastic. You can just go directly out of the glass. But I, I think more to your question. I think that we're going to con- we're going to continue to see uh, ink development, mm-hmm. which is what we're excited about. So, um, and we'll push our ink suppliers saying, you know, if there's anything else that you can do, um, can we have a, you know, can we can we have this bright, you know, particular ink? I mean, you have to remember back in the days. This goes back back in 2001 and two when we came through. And of course, lead was, remember, lead was taken out of a lot of things. Well, when mm-hmm. you had lead in paint, you created some extraordinary colors, but we mm-hmm. took lead out. And so, so they're always, their chemists are always coming up with ways. Can they give us more of those brilliant colors, but without lead? Mm-hmm. Because we cannot have it in our, we cannot have it in our thermoplastic inks. Um, so we, we constantly push them and look at their technology to say, we need to add this color. And you need to get it. We we need to. We, I know you want to. You can't have lead in it. So what do you have? And they're working on it. So I think we'll see more things in that arena. Um, I think what I'm going to see is I think more and more people are going to look to possibly print up here. Oh, print up yeah. On the neck. Yeah. And so I mean they have to have a certain quantity, but it's not outrageous. But I think more and more people are looking at that. That's just a, kind of the you know the final dressing. Um, you know, some people are now doing that and they're doing, you know, they got a cork and they're not doing a foil. You know, I, I kind of, I'm not sure. I really like, I really love foils on bottles. I just like them. The but naked think, look is takes, takes a little bit of getting used to. It, yeah, but more, I more get it, but it looks like they forgot something. Well, that's why I think they're kind of trying to do that. So they're trying to maybe do that and, and maybe by, you know, they're looking at all their packaging costs and maybe they, they do that and then they, 
Um, they can eliminate the foil, but I, I kind of said, I think you need the foil. I think the foil is great, but let us maybe decorate down below it or something yeah. like that. But, but, but these, these are options that people think about when they're looking at all their packaging. And mm. so, um, you know, the, the biggest thing I, we, we like it is that I, I think more and more designers are going to push us into color bands and color ideas that we haven't thought about. Mm. And so that's what I look forward to. And I'm excited about working with them. You know, whether you know, we, we have we have a couple of glow in the dark paints, but I think they can be better. Um, and so um, and so and, and I want to know, you know, can I do four or five glow in the dark paints? So those are kind of a challenge. But so they're working on them. Mm -hmm. So it really gets it, it really gets back down to dealing with our ink suppliers. You know, what's 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 the next hot thing that you're working on with color that we can then demonstrate on a wine bottle and show the industry to say, this is new. It's doable. It, it's production friendly. This could be a mind blower designed in the right way. So I, I think that's really where I, I see it as more and more designers understand what can be done in screen print more and more will embrace it as a possible alternative to what they're currently getting. Yeah. And, and then the designers will push the, will push it forward because they'll be demanding yeah. more and more colors or different yeah. variations. Yeah. And so, you know, so those are the things that we kind of look forward to. I mean, from our standpoint, we're always looking at too is, is uh, you know, the, the the challenge for the small guy through is that, you know, we have wineries that will never be bigger than 2,000 or 2,500 cases or maybe three or 4,000 cases. That's the sum total of what they'll be. But within that three or 4,000 cases, they have like 12 SKUs. Mm. You know, they'll have 200 cases of that, 250 of that, 300 of that. So as we look at things and when you look at that, by the time they start to look at those costs, paper or other other options can be more expensive than screen print. So our job also is trying to say, how can we give them the stirring package, but still deliver it at a price point that makes sense for them? Yeah. And so, because we typically are, are a little bit on the um, on the smaller runs, we're, we're we're absolutely price competitive. On larger runs, we're a little more expensive, but it's all about the branding for what you're trying to create. And if you're brand building, you're, they're, they're saying the package is going to be critical to a wine, let's say that I'm selling for $22 a bottle, because it's going to be three tier. And unfortunately, you can't have the winemaker standing you know, in aisle three talking about this particular bottle of wine. So we need to come up with something to help them and that consumer gravitate over to that bottle to say, what is this that I'm looking at and pick it up? maybe read the notes and say, I really love this look mm -hmm. and I want to take it home and I want to try it. And so I'd like to think that that's part of the compelling story of what we have for brand builders is that we believe in the screen print medium because there's so few packages out there. If we design it correctly, it's going to make people gravitate to it and say, I want to try it. Oh, absolutely. And then I say to them, we're going to, I would say to my winemakers, my wineries, I say, we will we will ensure that we help you sell the first bottle. You better make sure you did your job because you're going to sell the second and the third bottle. You know, so, <laughs> so you know, as long as you do your job on the inside of the bottle, we're going to kill ourselves to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do on the outside of the bottle. I love so, it. We'll guarantee the first bottle. It's up to you exactly. to make sure they come back for a second. Let's hope. Yeah, that that is the uh, that's the idea. That's awesome. That, that's great. So you know what I'm. As we wrap down here, I'm always I always like to ask, who do you admire right now in the wine industry? Boy, there's a long list. I would say in the valley, um, I, I've always admired Ron Bauer mm. as a as a family business and the product that they produce. Uh, Kirk Bengay um, is doing some incredible things um, along the trail with what he has done. Um, I love what the guy's doing at, at uh, B Sellers and O'Brien Estates, some of my small guys. One of my, I'm a big fan of Pantesca Wines and they, they do some extraordinary work with us where we do a lot of engraved bottles for them. Mm. But everything they do is just over the top. They don't, uh, you know, they don't spare any expense to make the finest mountain, you know, mountain wine that you can get just for, you know, from a small standpoint. Um, I love trying to do over in Sonoma County. I've been doing wine for years. I work with Miro, their winemaker. Um, and, I, and I think also there's Emeritus Pinot Noir. Um, I mm. love Kokomo. These are small guys out there that I really appreciate and admire what they what they do. Um, you know, glass suppliers, you know, we work with all of them, but um, 
you know, we, we really love working with Tricor and M.A. Selva and Encore. We've known for a long time. Berlin, I mean, uh, Saxco, they, they've all been really grateful, gracious with us. They refer us business, and we're happy to work with all of them. Um, Oh God, who else? I mean, that's really our our, our biggest our, our biggest interplay with other suppliers are the glass suppliers. We don't really interact with corks capsules because that's all that's always on the final end. So they deal directly with their wineries. Sure. But but in terms of, of people that I see out here that have really done some incredible things from a winery standpoint, um, I mentioned Clinker Brick has been a great client, and I think they're doing all the right things out there in Lodi. Oak Farms is another great artisanal producer. Um, out there in the Lodi area, they're making some superb wines. You know, down in Paso Robles, you've got Hope Family, uh, their Triana brand, and we do a lot of work with Dow, Dow Family Vineyards. Mm -hmm. There's an extraordinary winery down there. We do a, a tremendous amount of large format, actually screen printing and etching. Mm -hmm. So we're thrilled to be working with them on some exciting things. So, um, and then up in Oregon, uh, we do some beautiful work for A to Z Winery. Mm -hmm. we, do, um, we do a a seven screen, five color package for their rosé, and then a five color package for the rieslings. And we, we, we love the we love the printing and the packaging, and uh, we're we're thrilled to be a, a supplier partner. They seem to deliver, you know, a beautiful bottle of wine for a really great value. And so I, I really admire wineries, that, you know, that can somehow continue to do that. Um, you know, I, I I get a script out here, but like I said, there's about 40 <laughs> wineries that I mentioned. You know, true, and I you know I love I love them all, but uh, it's hard. It's hard to, you have so many clients. It's hard to mention everyone. Yeah, but as a, but just as a you know you know from small to large. I mean, one one guy in particular, Lambourne Vendors, he's been up on Hell Mountain, I've, and I've done work for Michael for like 18, 19 years. Just wow. a good gentleman. But again, classic case. We do like six, seven hundred cases, and that's mm -hmm. what he produces off his mountain vineyards. So. And we we have a lot of guys like that. We just love to death, and we want to, you know, we want to continue to be there as a critical partner. We want to continue to see them prosper, and uh, when they bring us a new idea and a new concept, we're 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 excited and delighted to try to, you know, be part of that success. So that's that, that's my story, and that, that's, I'm with it. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good story. <clears throat> so today we've been talking with um, Michael Bergen of Bergen um, Screen Printing and Etching. Uh, Michael, where can people learn more about your company and you? Well, the best thing is to start by going to our website, www.bergenglass.com, B-E-R-G-I-N-G-L-A-S-S.com. And, um, and, and, and I'll give you a tease because we have a nice website, but we're going to be launching a brand new website that's in development, and that should be rolling out early to mid-July, and we're pretty excited about that. So make a note. And uh, check us out. It's the same website address, but uh, check us out mid end of July, and I think you'll be excited by what you see. Oh, that's gonna be great. Well, well, thank you so much, Michael, for joining us on the show today. Drew, it's been a pleasure, and uh, you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.